JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 30th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued trading higher against all but one of the other major currencies. It gained the most ground versus MZD, CAT and AUD in that order, while it uh, lost some ground only versus the Japanese yen. The strengthening of the US dollar and the Japanese yen combined with the weakening of the risk-linked uh, OZ, Kiwi and Luni suggests that markets uh, continue trading in a risk-off fashion yesterday and today in Asia. However, Looking at the performance of uh, major global stock indices, we see that uh, this was not the case. European shares were a sea of green with uh, only Spain, Cybex 35 closing nearly unchanged. In the US, both um, uh, the, Dow, the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 finished uh, fractionally above their openings, but this was after the S&P 500 hit a fresh record high. A fresh record was hit by Nasdaq as well, which gained 0.19% during Wall Street's uh, activity. As for today in Asia, sentiment was softer, although China, Shanghai Composite and South Korea's KOSP, KOSPI inched up, Japan's Nikkei 225 and Hong Kong's Hang Seng traded lower. Market chatter suggests that the improvement in market sentiment during the European and US sessions may have been due to better than expected consumer sentiment data from both the Eurozone and the US. That may be the case, but uh, with uh, the US employment report ahead of us, we prefer to stick to our cautious stance, even as some equity indices continue to march uh, to record highs. A strong employment report on Friday may add credence to the view that uh, the world's largest economy is uh, growing at a fast pace, but accelerating wages may also mean that inflation could surge more and may after all not be transitory. Something like that is likely to result in a stronger dollar and perhaps cause equities to correct, to correct slightly lower. As for today, we will get a first taste of how the US labor market is performing from the ADP private employment report for June. The report is expected to show that the private sector has gained 600,000 jobs in June, less than the 978,000 added in May. This could raise some speculation that the NFPs due out on Friday may come near, near their uh, own forecast of, um, of 675k. However, we will not rely much on the ADP report as it's been far from a reliable predictor of the NFPs. Even last month when the ADP revealed a 978k job uh, gain, the NFPs came in at 559k. It seems that market participants, market participants agree with us and this is evident by how insignificant market reactions have been to the ADP number in the last years. Ahead of the ADP, a more important data set uh, is uh, scheduled to be released and this is Eurozone's preliminary CPIs uh, for June. The headline, uh, the headline CPI rate is expected to have ticked down to 1.9 from 2% year over year, while the HICP excluding energy and uh, food one is forecast to have held steady at 0.9% year over year. A small decline in the headline rate and an underlying print still well below 2% may add more credence to the view that, uh, that ECB officials are unlikely to start considering withdrawing uh, monetary policy support anytime soon and thereby support European equities. At the same time, the euro is likely to continue drifting south. 
Now, as for the rest of today's events, during the early European session, we already got uh, the UK's final GDP for the first quarter, which was revised fractionally lower to minus 1.6% quarter over quarter from minus 1.5%. In a while ahead of the Eurozone CPIs, we will uh, get uh, the German unemployment rate for June, which is expected to have ticked down to 5.9% from 6%. Later in the day, from the US, besides the ADP report, pending home sales for May are, are, uh, are due to be released, and the forecast points to a 1% month-over-month -month decline after a 4.4% tumble in April. From Canada, we get the monthly GDP for April, which is expected to reveal a contraction of 0.9% month over month after expanding 1.1% in March. However, we don't believe that any potential slide in the loon due to that will be large and long-lasting. And long lasting. We believe that uh, CAD traders may prefer to pay more attention to the OPEC uh, Plus meeting scheduled for, uh, for tomorrow. As for the speakers, we will get to hear from ECB Executive Board Member Fabio Panetta, Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic, and the Richmond Fed President Thomas Barkin. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of uh, the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye. Have a great day and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.